Hickok 45 here with a favorite type of rifle, the lever gun, Marlin, model 94. And this one is the Cowboy Limited. You've seen those here before. I like them. Octagonal barrel and all, many of you do as well, right? So this is 357 Magnum and they're kind of hard to find these days. I found one and I like it. I have to admit, I really do. You know, we've been doing videos on several things lately and have a couple others we want to do uh, on, you know, even a polymer wonder, you know, coming up and things like that. And, you know, last night lying in bed, you know what? Tomorrow is my birthday, which is today. And thank you. Appreciate the best wishes. And uh, you know what? I'm just going to get out of the safe, whatever I want. Colt single action in tomorrow's video because this is the day we normally do a video if the weather's good and you know the heck with whatever we were planning to do I'm just gonna get out whatever I like act like it's my birthday something I really enjoy shooting and we're gonna do a video with it I really did that's what was my thinking and then the more I thought about it I thought well you know I haven't shot this enough yet and I love it and it was sort of on the schedule too and I said, you know what, I, I really can't think of anything I would rather get out and shoot, even though you know I have lots of favorite firearms, uh, than this. And because it's been on the short list to do uh, since I bought it. And uh, so here it is, the Cowboy Limited. And I think it's uh, an enjoyable enough way to spend my birthday, at least part of it, shooting. I mean, think about it, you know me, if you know me, shooting a lever action, uh, octagonal barrel, you know, Marlin, it doesn't get a lot better so here i am all right so pretty cool we're going to take some shots with it now like i say i purchased this one now, i've been looking for one for a good while and they are hard to find and they ain't cheap uh so this is a keeper it's definitely a keeper uh so i you know, look at this stuff man just uh that, that that's pot of ammo is a, a beautiful sight it holds uh, about i think 12 of these and if I'm not mistaken, it holds 14 38 specials. So had a plug in it uh, that reduced it to 10. And uh, since I don't hunt with it, you know, and I live in a free state, relatively free, I took the plug out. Uh, if you buy something like this, uh, you have to, whether it's a shotgun or a lever gun, it might come with a plug, which prevents you from putting more than 10 rounds in the, or maybe if it's a shotgun, more than three or whatever whatever the game laws are so be aware of that you don't want to remove that if you're going to be hunting or if you're in a state where the it's too much velocity or too much capacity okay your uh government officials do not trust you with 12 rounds you can only have 10 all right so uh so that is that and also before i forget it don't forget to go to the link in the description or our website hickok45.com and join the nra if you're not a member okay yeah, do what you can for the cause. Uh, and again, you can get there through our link or it, at our website. Uh, we have everything over on our website, all the people that support us, and uh, we deeply appreciate their help. It makes a lot of this possible. Uh, our uh, ability to bring you, you know, firearms, uh, you know, just, just lots of things, shoot them as much as we want. So we're a lot luckier than we deserve. What else can I say? So. Well, let me take a couple shots with this, okay, and see if it shoots. <laughs> it seems to. 357 Magnum. You know what I'm going to do, though? I want you to take a good look at it. i got that on safety cock. Isn't it pretty? Okay, this one was made in around 2001 or 2002, uh, early, early 2000. It's a JM model. Of course, that's why I was attracted to it. Uh, but I'm going to put this ugly limb saver on it, okay? So look how beautiful the stock is. It is pretty wood, isn't it? And, uh, you know, it just uh, helps me. Uh, it's not, not too much recoil, but it helps me with the link. Link, link. Can't talk today. Okay. Let's just shoot. I think it's appropriate to shoot a cowboy first, don't you? There you go. Let's get that other cowboy. <laughs> Took out the Desperados first. And uh, the gong. Let's take out the gong early on here. Good. Let's try that red plate on the left. 
Oh man. It went high, I think. Nice. Try the one on the right. Sweet shooter. Let's just come back here and take out a couple of two liters. That one that represents UT. Alabama. <laughs> I don't know what green is. You'll have to come. Oh, there's a jug of water. Ooh, there's another one. Click. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, you have seen the Cowboy Limited. It's one of my favorite firearms. Uh, the, the Marlin Cowboy Limited, as they're called, the Cowboy models with the octagonal barrel. And as I understand, they came out with these originally kind of because of uh, cowboy action shooting. You know, and boy, there were a lot of them used there. I don't know if they still use them as, as, as much. I know the 1873s and the 66s and all those and replicas of all those are used extensively. Uh, and other, and Henry rifles, they, they allow the, the new Henry rifles now. Uh, but uh, these were extremely popular when I started. Uh, it's what I started with in 45 Colt, uh, shooting cowboy action shooting. They were very popular and uh, they're, they're just uh, good rifles. Uh, Marlins are good rifles and uh, they have the advantage, you know, all the way back through, I think beginning in 89, they had this closed top so you could mount a sight on top of it. Whereas the Winchesters, you know, are open on the top and it makes it a little bit more problematic. There's ways to do it, of course, but uh, mounting sights and things have to be kind of side mounted or on the bolt. I've seen that too. But the way the 94 is and the, most of the Marlins is you, you got this solid top uh, strap there so you can put whatever I put I put these Skinner sights on this one I always replace that and a, and a question I get often is on the Skinner sights if it's a cowboy action model or cowboy limited model you don't need uh, to replace the front sight at least I never have had to on every one of them I replaced it and it's been three four five at least different ones of these 222s two different 22 long rifle uh, and uh, and then three of these now and so I've not had to replace that front sight so yeah uh, they are they are just nice and they're sweet shooters they feel great they, they look good uh, so I guess this isn't much of a review in terms of negatives because uh, negatives versus positives like we like to do oh there's some negatives but uh, I, I just wouldn't buy it if I didn't like it you know I got two of them already or three counting the 22 long rifle so yeah, these came along. I don't know if I've talked too much about it. And you know, with the Marlin rifles, I've always been a little more vague than with the, the Winchesters. But as I understand, because I was, you know, around through most of that, because I was born shortly, speaking of birthday, shortly after the Civil War. I remember when the 1873 came out, and dad was just ecstatic. I didn't understand it. I was only like seven or eight at the time. Uh, but he was just, he went crazy over the, the 1873. I found out later he was excited because it was a center fire, you know, firearm. It wasn't the old rim fire, you know, because those were not as reliable. And then, you know, in the 70s, you know, you had the 1873. And, you know, in the later 70s, he, he would let me shoot it. I got old enough to ride and shoot the thing. The 1873 was cool. I always thought it was heavy, you know, of course that was the early model and it was just black powder at the time. Uh, but it was neat. It was neat. I was, you know, into firearms uh, pretty heavily at the time, and I uh, used to read all the dime novels. I remember when, uh, you know, Custer and Hickok were killed in, I like, guess, 76. You know, I was about nine years old. That was, that was a big year. A lot of crazy things happening. But we would shoot, you know, around the ranch, and uh, and, and and I would shoot mostly the Winchester at that time. But then in, in the 80s is when Marlin came along with. Uh, I think it was 1881, that big bore uh, lever gun of theirs, the first one to chamber those big cartridges, like 4570. Again, Dad was happy he bought one of those things, and uh, it kicked like crazy. I wasn't as big then, but uh, I always thought it kicked a lot. So it wasn't until in the later, I see 1888, they came out with the, I believe it was 88, uh, firing more like this, and, and then in 89, they, 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 they tweaked it and i think that's when they started closing off the top strap they up until then they'd been a, an open top like a winchester so in 89 i think was the first time they looked more like this and then they tweaked it a little bit more and by 84 and voila here's what you ended up with and dad bought one of those too 
So interesting times. Some of it I remember, some of it I don't. I know, the, of course, the OK Corral shootout was in 81, I think, and that was a big event. Uh, you know, it was just dominating the newspapers, and that's all the adults were talking about. I didn't quite fully understand what all that was about. But they were into firearms, and so they found that interesting, and uh, it was a big news item, you know, of the day. So, but when Dad bought the 84, uh, I loved it because it was in pistol caliber, you know, chamberings, you know, 4440 was his. And I shot the heck out of that thing, as much ammo as we could afford. And so I'm glad to see it again, because up around the mid thirties, I, I recall they quit making them. And we were kind of in the market for a new one around 1940, but they had quit making them. So all you could find were used ones. Uh, but there just wasn't as much interest in the thirties, you know, for a pistol caliber lever gun, I guess, or a lot of other good lever guns. But guess what happened? Around the 60s, when the 44 Magnum you know, had been out a while, 357 Magnum, all these Magnum pistol cartridges and and handguns, you know, uh, Marlin decided to bring these back. So that was cool. That was cool. And here they are. And then cowboy action shooting, you know, that has uh, caused them to be very, very popular. And they're still making them. I don't know. You know, now the new Marlin company. So, you know, obviously I've witnessed a lot of history with Marlin and Winchester, but these days I just don't keep up with it as closely because, you know, let me load while I'm talking because, you know, now sometimes there's quality control issues and they bring out some of these old rifles and then they don't make many of them. And uh, I think a couple of three times, particularly with the 94, which is what this is, model 94, I understand they've had some quality control issues. And then they, I think they even suspended production of it for a while. And then maybe they were making it again. I think at their website, they are showing like this gun available in a 20 inch barrel, if I'm not mistaken, at least as I talk today here on July 11th. But, uh, you know, who knows, who knows? I don't want to bash them too much. Uh, many of us are really sad that, uh, that Marlin, you know, was sold and, that their quality uh, dropped and there were serious quality control issues. Uh, you've seen me do the 95, the new one, you know, and, and pointing out some of the, you know, the, the fit and finish on that thing and how kind of pathetic it, it was. You notice on this one, for example, the wood, you know, the beveling and everything, you know, it's, it's looks more like what it ought to look like, you know, nice wood, the fit and finish is good. Uh, the gun so far has worked just fine. So anyway, we hope Marlin gets their act together. Uh, you know, I, you, still, you still would like to think, you know, common sense would tell you, look, take, take this rifle, you, know, you can find these rifles, look them over and, and give them to the production people and, and say, hey, make one of those just like that. Think you can do that, you know? What does it take? What do you need? You need more quality control people? need the, the line to move more slowly what, what do you need uh, to make that rifle uh, matched in in quality you know fit and finish and operation and everything and I don't know maybe they've done that and it's going to be way too expensive I, I don't know to do that but anyway we would like to see that because we, we don't want to while we are a little upset with Marlin or Remington whoever we, we, we still want to keep making the things because they are one of the premier lever guns of all time you know, through my whole life almost, I've uh, enjoyed them, and, and they are great rifles. All right, so let's take a couple shots, quit yakking so much. How about the paper target? Mm. Oh man, right in the red, that, that, uh, that, I've earned some pot smoking. <laughs> ah boy, and a, and a little bowling activity. Yeah, how about a little water splash? Doggies. <laughs> More bowling. Oh boy. This is a fun rifle. There's another bowling pin. Very, very pleasant to mm -hmm. shoot. Uh, well, let's shoot something here and then we'll go over there and. Oh, how about a watermelon? And this guy. Oh, another pot. Look at that pot down there. Click. Tell you what, don't tell anybody, but it qualifies as a assault rifle. Okay, wow. 
what a nice rifle. Now, I'm not going to assault anybody, uh, but it's it's just a, a dream. 14, no, 12 rounds. Well, let's try some 38 Special, uh, speaking of that. I've tried it, I think, once or twice. I'm not sure they feed quite as well, which is understandable. We'll see. I'll just put in a few. But, uh, like I said, I, I did the count, and uh, at least I think it was these. It would hold 14 of these. Sometimes there's a little variation on length, depending on what bullet is loaded. Uh, what, what bullets loaded in the case is what I mean. And so, uh, it's like with shotgun shells, you, you know, maybe it's supposed to hold six, but it doesn't quite get them all in or, or whatever. The length varies a little bit. Let's try those, make sure they cycle okay. Because sometimes, uh, you know, with lever guns, they might cycle, but it's really rough and, and not very smoothly. Let's hit that uh, clay pigeon. Boom. <laughs> well, seemed to do okay. Yeah. So there you go. Now you really do have uh, high capacity. Don't tell anybody. High capacity. Yeah. So you get a couple more extra rounds of 38 special. I, I you know, I don't know. It depends on what you pay for your ammo. This is obviously carry ammo plus P, which uh, you know I'm I'm a. I'm a lucky individual and in that I don't even know the exact price of, of this ammo to compare for you. I'm sorry, that's, that's the kind of the benefit that, uh, again, we don't deserve. But I think with standard range ammo in 357, it may not be all that far off of what the cost is of a good, you know, carry round, you know, and me a hollow point like that. So, so uh, if you find some uh, 38 special that, you know, you, you really don't want round nose or pointed bullets, but if you find some that's not not a premium carry round, you know that, that might be uh, you know something you would shoot more in here. You wouldn't obviously shoot that much if you want that kind of uh, I don't know like power or uh, efficiency. You know you're you're probably hunting, so go ahead and use 357 Magnum. That's good to know though. It seems to feed those. Uh, I couldn't remember. It'd been a while since I tried that. I, I thought it did okay, but I thought it got rough on on one or two of the cycles. Maybe not. So, uh, about the, inter the rifle itself, you've seen these before here. This does have the cross bolt safety, uh, which a lot of people like me, purists, we, we tend to ignore it. Now, I'm not telling you to ignore a safety. Uh, you might need to use it. Uh, I still, you know, being old school and having grown up, you know, in the 1800s, I, I still just rely on the hammer. You know, the hammer and my finger off the trigger and knowing when there's something in the chamber and that kind of thing. But uh, one of the safeties I've talked about before is I'll load one of these up if I'm on a hike or shooting around, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll fire it at something and then I just won't work the, the action. That's my safety basically right there. I know there's a dead round, you know, an empty round under the hammer and then, you know, carry it around. And then if I want to shoot it again, put a live one in and shoot is one of the things I do. But uh, you observe all the rules, you know, gun pointing in the right direction, finger off the trigger, all the things that the, the Cooper's four rules, at least, you know, if you observe those, you're, you're in pretty good shape. So let's shoot some more Magnums and uh, see if there's any other lies I can tell you about this. Again, this is the Cowboy Unlimited. No, Cowboy Limited. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, it's limited. What's the limitation? I thought the gun was unlimited. Uh, but it's to me, it's it's kind of the premier Marlin in these model 94s. Uh, for one thing, it's partly because of my size, my height, and everything. It just it just feels better. It's more like a real rifle. Because if you get down to a 20-inch barrel from John or me, we were talking about this before the video. You really have a short little almost toy gun kind of thing, you know, for us. And so this feels like a little carbine. It has a 24-inch barrel. So, if you imagine what a, a 20 inch barrel might feel like to you, if you're a normal uh, size human, uh, probably feels about the same as this one does to us. It's a little bit longer. So, so that's one of the appeals uh, to me. I've always liked the octagonal barrel too. I just got a lot of cowboy in me, you know. I grew up in a time when a lot of those events occurred and uh, 
I was too young to appreciate what was going on sometimes, but you can relate to that, right? I was just, I was just glad uh, when it, you know, we got into the, uh, the 1920s when uh, Dad finally bought a car and I didn't have to carry these things around on horseback all the time. So I would get to ranges and out into the desert and different places a lot more easily on a weekend and shoot, you know, even when I was working. So it worked out pretty well. All right. Uh, you know what we've not done? We have not brought any game home yet, have we? All right. Uh, let's see. I didn't get to do a lot of buffalo hunting back uh, in the 1870s. I was pretty young, so let's do a little right now. 357 takes it over. Look at that. I'm going to try the one on the right because, again, that, that guy doesn't want to fall when you hit him. Whoa, what did I tell you? There he went. Oh, went over it. There you go. Turkey, you're going down too, buddy. Oh, went high. <laughs> this thing is a joy to shoot. Got a couple more bullets. Let, oh, here's a two liter right in front of my face. <laughs> We got another round. Mr. Gong, I'm going to hit you again. Until I'm empty. Click. So, what a beauty. The barrel's getting warm. Oh, nothing like a lever gun. And uh, you know that. You've seen several here. We're not shy about getting them out. There's a lot of cool modern rifles out there. I have some of them. But... Uh, I think these might be my first love. You know, these and the old guns I grew up with. Uh, can I load a couple more? Let's do that, okay? Oh, man. Like I said, we appreciate y'all's support and everybody's video. Oh, here comes Slam Fire. He probably won't come over. I can't believe he doesn't bother. This gunfire doesn't bother him. Uh, of course, he was over there into the barn. But we do appreciate you. We appreciate all of you folks over there, on uh, Gong Club members on our Patreon account, and uh, everybody that watches our videos. All the people that help us out, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it's great. And uh, we enjoy bringing you these firearms. Uh, it, it never gets boring. It never gets old because there are so many firearms that are interesting to shoot. And it's fun to share that you know, with people that, that can appreciate it and enjoy it. Uh, that, that never really gets old. So as long as we can keep doing it, we'll do it. Slamfar is off hunting somewhere. Life for him is, is just play. He gets to hang out in the house, outside, stalk little bugs and mice. Killed a little birdie the other day, poor guy. He's a vicious killer. It's, it's amazing, such a cute little cat. All right, uh, why don't we, I know what let's do. Lever gun, as I've tried to teach you all, uh, means that if it's a good lever gun, you are very well armed. Let's put one in the chamber. And let's just, uh, let me just move a little bit here. And let's just take care of those, uh, those two uh, desperados from another planet. Okay, they're kind of hard to, to put down. <laughs> click yeah I mean you can just pick off targets and uh, you can reload it pretty quickly isn't that uh, isn't that cool look at that gun smoke coming out of there yeah so I don't know what else to say about it I it's like some other firearms that that I like I could I could uh, slobber over them all evening uh, if, if you like shooting you enjoy firearms if you have any interest in history uh, you know, how can you not enjoy a lever gun? Uh, just, just the way they operate, they're just wonderful uh, pieces of machinery. They, they really are. They shoulder so uh, naturally. And again, that's the extra length there makes this one feel, to me, like with that pad off, 
it would feel to you probably, okay? It's not because I think that's pretty. It's not because the recoil is extensive at all. It uh, just adds to the length and it uh, puts that puts my eye right on the site where I, where I want it and where I need it to be. And you know, that's one of the, the, the nice things about the modern era because there were nothing like this available in the 1880s when I really needed it uh, again or for the first time. Just, there was no rubber butt pads that I could find and I couldn't afford it. You know, gunsmithing was really expensive for me. I didn't make much money back then. But uh, so anyway, uh, I took the side off there, of course, because I added the skinner. That's why, if someone will ask that, that's why that gap is there. That's where the original, like the buckhorn sight, you know, is, is dovetailed in there. So I knocked that out. Uh, you can get a blank, I think, to fill that in. I've done that on one of mine. And uh, I told you, I think, kind of stuff you probably might be interested in knowing. I don't know, 357 Magnum. One of the most common cartridges, uh, you know, out there, and to have a rifle chambered in it is uh, is pretty pretty cool. And if you didn't know that in cowboy action shooting, the 357 38 Special is wildly popular because it's low recoil and everything, and it's wildly popular. That's why these things are so hard to to find, uh, even in the non cowboy version. Uh, and man, people are just after them. You see one of these on Gun Broker or somewhere. It, uh, it is highly sought after, especially one of these Cowboy Limited models. So uh, there was one a few months ago, and I thought, oh, it's new in the box, you know, the same gun, JM model. And I even bid on it a few times. Oh, that thing got up to astronomical pricing. It, you know, a Marlin. You know, I thought, wait a minute. I'm not going to put that kind of money. You're not going to buy a vintage Winchester or something for that, you know. But this one wasn't too outrageous. So uh, anyway, I, I ramble too much. You can tell that uh, I, I really like this rifle, and I will shoot it uh, a fair amount. I might even invite you all again uh, to the compound when I get it out. How's that? Okay. Okay, appreciate your support. Uh, glad you came by this evening. It's really hot, humid, sweaty. Uh, good to see you able to endure the elements just as I'm doing. And enjoy a little shooting, or at least watching me shoot. Selfish, ain't I? Life is good. Hi, welcome to the end of the video. It's good to see you guys here. I want to tell you guys about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. You can find them at sdi.edu. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can become certified in gunsmithing or get an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they also accept GI Bill. So check them out at sdi.edu. And while you're on the internet, please also check out some of the other stuff we got going on. There's the Hickok 45 and Son YouTube channel. There's the Hickok 45 Facebook. There's the real Hickok 45 on Instagram. There's Hickok 45 on Twitter. I've got John underscore Hickok 45 on Instagram. Um, there is a John Hickok Facebook page. Uh, we have full30.com. There's our website, hickok45.com. We'll keep it simple for you. Uh, you can also find our store. We sell shirts and stuff like that on the website. Uh, there's also links on the main channel page and in the description and all that good stuff. Uh, and, and please be sure to check the descriptions in the in the videos every now and then because we'll put information in there sometimes uh, that might be useful to you. Who knows? But I appreciate you guys for watching the whole video. I hope that you enjoyed what you saw. Uh, I'm sure that you did, and if you didn't, we'll probably hear about it. But I'll see you guys later, and thanks.